here we are loaded up into the game now before we do single player and we actually play the game we have to do something super vital to your experience and that is avatar customization before you do anything else you've got to set your real world height okay this is the avatar customization page there is a lot on here right now but we'll work through it one at a time first off is your actual avatar customization you can choose what you wear right now i am wearing the uh, the boonie hat folded, my goggles are tinted, you can see that I have this right here. None of it impacts gameplay. Whether you put on a light uniform or a heavy uniform, it doesn't impact your gameplay. It's not going to make you take less hits. So don't worry about that. It's all about your personal preference for looks. This next part is really important. Over here is something called avatar height calibration. Depending on what you set it to, if it's your real height, then everything you do, crouching down to grab things, running, Shooting, it should feel normal. Do not set it above or below your real height. It won't impact your height in game. Everything will stay the same. Set it to your real height. I have it set to five. I'm gonna bump it up to where those eyes are looking at mine. You can follow the instructions up there, but I find it's best when those eyes are looking right at mine. Now here's a super important one. We're talking about your vest. I have customized my vest quite a bit. This is now what it looks like at first. What you can do is you can reset your vest, and this is what it looks like. For most people, this would be fine, but for me, I think it's kind of clunky. So what you can do is you can grab things and you can move them around on your vest. Kind of move them into whatever position you think is best. Okay, for me, I am a left-handed person, so having my holster on the right side would not be great for me. So what I did was I took my holster and I moved it around. I also moved everything down so it's more like the onward loadout, so it's more familiar to me. Now once you're done, this is important. Once you have everything set up, click the save button and everything will be saved. That is avatar customization done. Now we can move on to the next topic, which is actually booting up and playing the game. Now of course, this is assuming that you have adjusted all of your settings, which I'm not going to go into because it's a whole other video topic that we could cover, but honestly, you can just look through settings on your own. It's all personal preference in there. Welcome to the actual game of Tactical Assault VR. I'm guessing that if you're watching this video, then you've already bought the game, you've already booted it up. But this is the sandbox world. You have unlimited respawns, you can spawn doors and you can spawn enemies, and there are tons of different weapons and attachments that you can play with over there. When you spawn in, you're gonna spawn in over there, but I really wanted to give you a good picture of what this all looked like. Now when you actually spawn in, you're gonna be about right here, and this big daunting thing is gonna be in front of you. Now we're gonna work through this one piece at a time to help you break it down, just like we did with the character customization. Starting off with your primary weapon. You can move your cursor down and select on primary. We're gonna start off with rifles. The rifles are really easy to understand. They cover all of your rifle type weapons, including the M4A1, the AK-47, the SCAR-H, the MK-18, and the FAMAS. Your SMGs also cover a similar kind of turf. They are all SMGs, really easy to understand if you know anything about firearms. These include the UMP5, the P90, the MP5, and the MP9. Now snipers are where it gets interesting. There are only two weapons in this category. One is an actual sniper, the M40, and the other is a DMR, the MK12. And finally, there is the pistol only category. That means you'll get some pistol ammo that you can use to better suit your needs. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna be using the M4A1 as it's a very common firearm and most people know how it operates. Once you have your primary weapon, you can choose your secondary. Unlike the primary weapon selection screen, you just have an arrow. Most pistols are the same, and it's all up to personal preference. Some do higher damage, like the 1911, but have less bullets in their magazines, while others do less damage but have more bullets, like the M9. I personally like the M9, so I'm going to go with that. Now, you've most likely been wondering, what are these two things underneath the primary and secondary? And these are your attachments. You can choose your sight, and you can choose your muzzle. Sights are pretty straightforward. They give you different kinds of red dot sights, hollow sights, any kind of sight that you can think of that will be put on the gun. While muzzles give you suppressors. There are three different suppressors to choose from at the moment. Over here, you have your utilities. You have two utilities that are going to be put onto your vest and one utility for your shoulder. Right now, I have health shots enabled and a pump action shotgun. But I'll go through every single utility later in the line. Once you've selected everything that you want, you can click the equip button, and it'll all pop up in front of you. Now we're going to talk about how to use a weapon. You grab the weapon by using the grip button. And just like an onward, you actually mess with things 
that fit the weapon with trigger. So I'm holding this magazine with trigger right now. And I can cock the slide with trigger. Right now I have a round chamber. So that means there's a round in the chamber that's already there. So even if I take out the magazine, it'll still fire. Now there's nothing in that chamber. And to start it up again, I have to what we call rack a bullet. It's the same way with pistols. You can grab the magazine with trigger, stick it in, and pull back your slide. The chamber around. On your vest, you have extra magazines for your rifle and extra magazines for your pistols. We'll go through everything else on the vest here in a hot minute, but right now we're gonna focus on the rifles and the pistols and all your other weapons. On your rifle, you will see that you have a laser and a flashlight. These can both be activated in different ways. There are two ways of activating your laser. You can grab it physically with grip, which is buggy and doesn't always work. Once you've grabbed it, you can press trigger button to activate your laser. This is slow and hard to do, so I recommend that you do the second option. You can grab onto the foregrip, or the front of your gun, then you can press the bottom button on your respective controller to activate the laser off and on. To activate your flashlight, you have to grab onto the front of your gun and press trigger on that controller. You'll turn your flashlight on and off. Currently, I have the one to three times magnification optic. To use this, you start out with three times magnification. To take off the magnification, you can grip this once and it'll pop off. Then you have a classic hollow sight. To put it back on, you do the exact same thing. Now, time for fire select. To change your fire select, press the bottom button on your gripping controller. That'll change your fire select from semi-auto to full auto, depending if your gun has that. Pressing the top button, depending on the gun, will release the magazine. You can also directly grab out the magazine. Now let's talk about your pistol. This pistol works exactly the same as the rifle. You can grab onto it with your other hand and press the buttons to activate the laser and the flashlight. All pistols have the option to have a red dot sight and or iron sights. Now we're going to talk about how to use your vest and where everything is. I've set up my vest like this so that every pouch is easily accessible so that you can see what every pouch does. Your vest will be more vertical than mine and you can change it to look like however you want it to in the character customization screen. Let's start off with magazines. First you have your two rifle magazine carriers right here. These carry your primary weapon ammunition. Next, you have your two utility carriers. These will carry your utilities that you just selected. Then you have your knife carrier. It'll carry your knife. Then you have your holster right here. On your chest is where you will store your primary weapon. And behind your shoulder is where your, your third utility will be stored. I have the Remington shotgun equipped. There is also something known as a dump pouch on my left hip. You can put magazines in there when they're empty to over time fill them back up. And if at any time when you're not in an active mission, you lose some items that are valuable to you, or you just want to reset your character, you can press the menu button and it will open up this screen where you can see change loadout slash kill player. It will kill you, so be warned if you're in a mission with no response. When you respawn, you'll be able to select your weapons again. You may notice in your sandbox world that you'll have these two big button panels. One of these spawns a door right here that you can practice breaching, and the other one spawns enemies in that big building right over there. For the purpose of this demonstration, of demonstrating breaching utilities, we're going to spawn a door. The first utility that you can use is a breaching charge. To activate it, press trigger. Then, stick it on the door, and wait. It'll blow the door right open. Alternatively, you can also use a grenade to blow open the door. This is bugged and does not always work, unfortunately. Your third utility are mostly about breaching. This Remington shotgun is a clear example of that. To cock it, hold down trigger on your cocking handle, and pull back and push forward. New round will be chambered. On the butt of your gun, you will have five new rounds that you can use to put into the gun. These are your only rounds, so be careful. To blow open a door, shoot anywhere on the door. It'll blow the door right open. This also does substantial damage to enemies. Another breaching utility is the sledgehammer, which is also found as your third utility on your shoulder. Holding with both hands, you can blow open a door. Alternatively, there is one more way that you can bust open doors. Taking your gun with both hands and using the butt of your rifle, 
You can bust open a door. You can also unlock doors by hitting them repeatedly with your pistol. Finally, you can also blow doors away by repeatedly shooting them. This differs with every single gun and all their individual cartridges. The higher the caliber, the easier it is to blow open a door. For example, the M30 will blow open the door on one shot, while the MP9 will blow open the door after an entire magazine. Welcome to the room randomizer. Here, you and your friends can randomize an organization of a couple rooms, spawn enemies, and breach them for practice. It just so happens that here, we're going to be talking about self-utilities, ones that don't directly impact the breaking of doors, but you might need to use on your next mission. Starting off, we have the smoke grenade. This is very self-explanatory. You throw it, and it spawns smoke. The AI will be confused and have a hard time seeing you through the smoke. As well as in PvP mode, this could be very useful. The next item is something super useful that can be used to revive your teammates as well as heal you. This is the health stim. To use it, press the trigger button to pop off the cap. You can also press the bottom button on your respective controller to flip it around for easier positioning. Stab it into your teammate to revive them, as well as into yourself to heal you. If you're already at full health, taking this will give you an overdose and you'll have to take another to regain your health. The only utility number three that is used for self-use is the riot shield. This is a classic riot shield. It blocks bullets and that's about all it does. It's really good for clearing rooms because it can also bust open doors just like the butt of a rifle. Our next utility is another grenade. It's a flashbang. When you pull it and you throw it, it'll go off after a couple of seconds, blinding enemies as well as your teammates and you in the process for a short amount of time. When blinded, enemies do not move and do not shoot. This is especially useful when clearing doors, but it does not directly impact the breaking of doors, so that's why it's in self-utilities. Our next utility is a spotting scope. Whatever you look at, the distance in yards will be measured. That's all it does, which is why it never gets picked and never gets used, which is sad because it could be very useful in a longer range map. Unfortunately, we don't have very long range maps yet. Our last utility of all is the wire clippers. They're very situational and used on only one mission, void, bank robbery, where you have to defuse a bomb. You can use your knife on that mission, and wire clippers are already provided, so it, there is no reason to choose these as your utility. Their entire purpose is to cut wires, and that's about it. They can't do damage. Now let's talk about your knife. Your knife goes with you everywhere, and it doesn't count as a utility, so you'll always have it. Just like the health stim, you can press the bottom button on your respective controller to flip it up and down for better stabbing and or throwing. Unlike an onward, the knife will always deal damage, no matter if you're holding it or not, so be careful around your teammates. To kill an enemy, you're gonna have to stab them quite a few times, so just be warned that this is not a very effective weapon as opposed to your firearms. And that just about covers it for utilities. Now we're moving on to our next topic. Now it's time to talk about the actual content of Tactical Assault VR in ways of shootout and missions. Shootout is arcadey. It's run and gun. It only has two maps. One map is resort. It's easy. You just shoot drones out of the sky. It was the very first thing added to this game. You stand in one spot and you don't move. Urban is a little bit harder. You take on waves of enemies within a city. You can move around the map, which is very important. You get ammo drops in each of these every once in a while. Missions are where the fun really starts. This is why you bought the game, to play tactical, realistic missions. These can be day or night, hostage rescue, they have different modifiers, and every mission has a different main objective for you to complete. There are three missions available right now, with tons more coming on the way. The first one is Incoming Storm. In Incoming Storm, you have to retrieve a USB stick from an evil group of terrorists in Iraq. In Hidden Forest, you have to take down that terrorist group's oil fields with a bomb. And in Void, you have to stop that same terrorist group from robbing a bank by defusing a bomb. All three of these have hostage rescue that you can also use to rescue hostages along with your main objective. I'm not going to show you what any of these missions entail, so you can discover it for yourself and have a good time discovering all the different ways that you can use to conquer these missions. Over here you have your sandbox mode and your room randomizer to go into the two rooms that we talked about utilities and all the basics in. Welcome to the multiplayer lobby. Here you can join a room or create a room and wait around to start the mission while you're waiting for the host. Here, before we actually explore this area, we're going to talk about tips and tricks that didn't really fit into the categories that are going to really help you a lot. The Glock is a very well-known and very powerful pistol running on 9mm cartridge. 
It's commonly known as the service pistol for the U.S. police force. The Glock in this game is special in that it has a fire select to switch from semi-automatic to full auto. No other pistol in the game has this feature, so use it wisely. Unfortunately, they designed it so that when you sprint, it also does your selector switch, which is very annoying for left-handed people. Now let's talk about a tip for all pistols. If you have a red dot sight equipped, you can see that the red dot is not very good. It's pretty small, it's compact, it'll get the job done. But what you can do is you can grab the slide with trigger, and then you can press the bottom button to change your reticle to different things. There is a wide selection of reticles that you can change to. You can also use this to rack the slide. Another cool tip is that either by shooting or breaking it with the butt of your gun, you can break glass. Then you can proceed to climb over the windowsill with the grip button. You can climb ladders and other objects by using the grip button. Whenever that symbol pops up, you can climb that object. Don't climb too fast because the climbing is usually bugged in this game, which is unfortunate. Now one last tip that will really help you in your missions if you ever get lost. When you press the menu button, you've already seen this screen. This is for hosts, which we'll talk about in a second. Usually, over here, there's a little map button. Pressing that button will open up the map for you, which lets you see where you are, where your mission objective is, and how you get there. Also on the screen, you will see your mission objectives. Depending on what mission you're in, you'll have different objectives. Another cool thing is that you don't take fall damage. Use this information wisely. Now we're going to talk about how to be a host in the cross-play multiplayer lobby. Over here, you can select your missions. Incoming Storm, Hidden Forest, Void, and the Room Randomizer. Over here, you can select your modifiers, whether it's a night mission or a hostage rescue. You can also select your respawn, so if you die, you'll respawn this many times. Over here, if everybody's selected ready, you can click Start. Or if you want to start it before that, you can click Start Override, and then click Start. In the very back there, there's a room where guarding enemies will spawn for you to shoot through and have a good time. Once they're all cleared, the host can go into their menu and spawn guarding enemies or spawn aggressive enemies that will run at you guys. They can also clear the enemies. And that's everything about the multiplayer lobby. You can explore it, you can shoot at the dummies, you can climb onto the roofs. That's about it. Its main use is to facilitate players while the host is starting it up. It isn't anything fancy, it needs some improvements, but it gets the job done. Now, I'll show you a brief demo of every single gun in the game and how they reload. Starting off with the AK-47. It reloads by taking the magazine, slotting it in, and blowing back the slot. Now we have the M1911. You reload it by sticking in the magazine and racking the slide. Now we have the Scar Age. You reload it by taking your magazine, sticking it in the magwell, and blowing back the slide. You also have the P320. You reload it by taking your magazine, slotting it in, and racking back the slide. Next, we have the MK18. It reloads by taking your magazine, slotting it into the magwell, and pulling back the slide. Here we have the USB 45. It reloads by taking your magazine, sticking in the magwell, and blowing back the slide. Here we have the FAMAS. This is a bullpup style weapon, so the magazine goes behind the trigger group. Stick the magazine in the magwell, and pull back the slide. And yes, I understand that this is not technically a slide, and you're not technically pulling it back, but I don't care. It's easier for people to remember that are new. Now we have our first SMG, known as the UMP 45. You reload it by taking your magazine, sticking it in the magwell, and pulling back the slide. Here we have the P90. This is an uncommon reload, as it doesn't just slot into place for your magazine. You have to actually take your magazine, stick it in the front, then pull back the slide, which is really hard to do. Here we have the UMP5. You reload it by taking your magazine, sticking it in the magwell, and pulling back the slide. When it runs out of bullets, this will actually come back. And normally, in most games, you can HK slap it by slapping down. In this game, though, you can't. As you can see, the slide is now back there, as because of the indicator, but you can't slap it to send it forward. You have to grab it, which is really sad. And finally, for our last SMG, we have the MP9. Take your magazine, stick it in the magwell, and pull back the slide. For our first sniper, we have the M30. You reload it by sticking in the mag and pulling back the bolt. And also sticking the bolt down, which is kind of tricky to do in VR, but you get used to it. Both this and the MK18 DMR have a little tripod that you can pull down with grip. That keeps the gun in place in air. You can undo that with grip again. And the final gun in the game, which will wrap up this video, is the MK18 DMR. This is how you reload it. You stick in the magazine into the magwell and pull back the slide. It also has a bipod, just like the other gun. 
That wraps up our video for Tactical Assault VR Guide. This has covered everything that you need to know about the game, how to get started. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. We might make a follow-up with more advanced tactics. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Griffin. Have a great day. Thank you.